Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our second Sunday of Easter. Uh, while we're waiting for others to gather, uh, and if you gather your family together before we start worship, I'll just uh, I'll just pluck a little bit while we're waiting. How about that? everybody. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, if you ever come join us at St. Paul's United Church of Christ in Erie, uh, we usually get started around 1035, so that way in case you run a little bit over, no worries. You're not too late that way. So I'm trying to stick to our normal worship starting time. Um, if you had a chance to uh, download or copy and paste or however you need to, uh, the order of worship was on Facebook just below this uh, post. If by chance you're watching this after, the worship has been posted. You can scroll down now and, and get that information for yourself to uh, go through the worship service as if you're present. So uh, please join me in our call to worship. Sing a new song, a springtime shout out to life. Sing praise to our joyful Easter God, whose power brings new life out of death. Immerse doubt and despair in the fountain of new birth. Find refreshment and strength for a future of hope. For God has taken ordinary things and made them extraordinary. Sing a new song. Amen. Join me in our prayer of invocation. Holy God, Nothing is beyond your power to transform. In a gray dawn, you coax songs of Alleluia. From the tombs of despair, we take refuge in you. Call us to wake up and work. We praise you for this amazing day. Come, risen Christ, in newness and hope, on this Easter tide morning. Amen. Our first song is called Be Not Afraid. Uh, and this was written by Bob Dufford. It's one of those oldies, oldies but goodies. A lot of the songs that I'll be playing are oldies because um, they're ones that I'm familiar with. I'll try to get myself familiar with some other ones uh, so we can change it up a bit here and there. But if you're able to uh, copy and paste the song and sing it, sing along with me, um, again, you're at home so you can sing as loud as you want. Uh, and don't let anybody make fun of you because you're glorifying God. Amen? Amen. So please join me and Be Not Afraid. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander for in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in Understand. You 
shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I Blessed are your poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked tongues insult and hate you, Amen. Woo, that song makes me want to cry. Because we never have to be afraid. Our God is a mighty God. And he is with us. Always. And everywhere. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Redeeming God, with you there is always more life, more hope, more joy. When doubt assails us and we fail to recognize you at work in our lives, Lord, have mercy. When fear impairs our faith and our eyes and ears and hearts do not know you, Christ, have mercy. When anger and sorrow stop us from doing the risky work of love, Lord, have mercy. My beloved church family, in our doubting times, our fearful times, our unfaithful times, Christ died and rose again and offers grace for our sins. Know that as we turn ourselves toward Christ with repentant hearts, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Now we come to a time of prayers to offer the Lord our joys, our sorrows, our concerns, if you have prayers that you would like the church to lift up, please put it in the comment string. Uh, after the service posts, I'll go through the comments and respond to, to all the comments uh, and make sure that I lift up uh, any prayers that uh, you've play, uh, posted there. Let us pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, O oh God, for your everlasting, reckless love. So reckless that you sent us your son, Jesus, to suffer and die for us. That he could rise again, securing our unity with you. O oh God, you know the suffering that is going on in your world. We lift all those up, O oh God, who are suffering right now. We also lift up, O oh God, all those people that are caring for those who are suffering in any way. 
We ask not only for your healing power, O oh God, for all those who are ill, but your Holy Spirit strength, O oh God, for all those who are caring for the ill. Father, we ask in a special way that your Holy Spirit presence be upon all those who are alone, lonely, struggling in this time of isolation. Father, may we be able to reach out in some small way, whether it be a phone call or an email, a letter, to say, we love you. And Father, we ask a special blessing upon our sister Nancy, for it was her birthday, Lord, yesterday. So we thank you for the blessing that Nancy is to our church, O oh God, and all that she does to keep us going. We thank you, Lord, that you are blessing her. And Father, also thank you uh, for all that she does behind the scenes in her own humility, Lord. She is certainly a reflection of your love. Father, we thank you for not only who you are, O oh God, but also all the things you do for us. Help us not to take for granted your blessings. We lift the prayers of our hearts up to you, O oh God, those that have been spoken and those that we hold deep within ourselves as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, amen. I ask that you join me now to our prayer of illumination before the reading of the word. Holy Spirit of God and inspire of the word, may the hearing of your word draw us deeper into the mystery of your love. Help us to understand what we hear and respond to it with our lives. Let it bring the fire of your love into our lives. Make us hunger for your word, for it speaks to us of the risen Christ who alone can satisfy. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. If you haven't uh, grabbed your Bibles yet, I ask that you grab those now. If you'd like to read along, or you can just uh, be where you're at and, and listen and hear the reading of God's word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you rejoice, even if now for a little while. You have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that through perishable, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. 
And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, my beloved siblings, what a reckless love. What a reckless love. To love someone so deeply, you desire your existence be for the purpose of suffering and dying for them. Not because they love you, or even know you for that matter, but simply because you love them. However, you want to make sure that you can help them be the best versions of themselves so you also provide your own spirit to dwell in them, which aids them for times of trial and tribulation. A reckless love it is, this God of ours who loves us regardless and in spite of us loving him. That is a reckless love. The moment Christ died and rose again, the evil one no longer had a hold on humanity. Unless, that is, we choose to allow it to have its hold. I will tell you, if you're listening to this message and you're hoping for something warm and fuzzy, it's not going to be today. Today, the Holy Spirit placed upon my heart to <clears throat> keep it real. He gave me a message. It's not going to be easy to hear. Being a Christian... When this text was written, it was hard. You had to face constant persecution for your faith, dealing with trials and struggles. Testing of our faith is something that it'll always exist. In fact, anyone who says it's easy being Christian, it's a liar. That's right. It is not easy being Christian. If you've heard that message, that's a lie, because it's not. If it were easy, the prayer that we just recited, that the Lord Jesus taught us, if being Christian was easy, if having faith was easy, Jesus wouldn't have taught us and wouldn't have included deliver us from the evil one. This is the prayer we're taught. We would obviously need to pray for this on a consistent basis because of the struggles that we deal with. Our salvation, thanks be to God, is secured by the grace of God through Jesus Christ. But it doesn't remove the times of trial we will go through. What's promised is the power of God within us as we go through them, and mind you, I said, through them. That's the promise in Psalm 23, right? There's going to be a valley. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be trials. But the promise is we're going to go through. We're not going to be left there. Yes, we are in times of trials and testing and struggles right now. But we are not going to be left there. We're going to go through them. But we must do it in our faith. We have the power of Almighty God in us to strengthen us while we are on this earth. This message is for us as much as it was for those who received it when it was written. However, we have what they didn't have. 
We have access to the written Word of God. We have access to growing a deeper relationship with Christ than they did. They didn't know Christ. They knew of him, as Peter tells us in this passage. Yet those folks had a faith that was to be reported as being great. As Peter said, they loved him, but they didn't see him. We have the word of God. Yet how are we doing? For those of us who have extra time on our hands at home in this time that we're in, how many of us have spent extra time in our Bibles? Now, something I always say is that if, if you feel condemnation from a message, that's not the Holy Spirit. You should feel conviction. I don't say this to make anyone feel bad. But if you feel convicted, listen to the Holy Spirit. So how many of us have spent extra time in our Bibles? What a blessing to have some extra time to grow in our relationship with God. We can use this time to dig deeper into God's word. Not because we're worried about going to heaven. As this passage says, that's done. That's secured. That's not what I'm talking about. Because we are secured for our union with God in heaven. But more, what I'm saying... The purpose of digging in is more for the purpose of deepening and strengthening our faith while we're here. Because hear me, beloved, our faith will be tested. We need to ask ourselves, when these times our faith is being tested, how are we going to get through it? Is our faith shining through to others in this time or not? Are godly behaviors and decisions reflecting the personality of Christ or not? Here's a little way to know. If the choices we make or even decisions of others we are supportive of are resulting in the consequences that it could cause the harm of another, then we are not living examples of our faith. Let me say that again. If the choices we make, or even decisions of others we are supportive of, are resulting in the consequences that it could cause the harm of another, then we are not living examples of our faith. Whether we are choosing to do something or support another's actions that result in the harm or potential harm of another human being, then my beloved family, there's work to be done. Like I'm hearing people, I'm hearing people say, don't worry about this disease that's out there. So they go out and about like nothing. My nephew last week had to go to the store to get some food. He's in line at the grocery store. He's got his mask on, gloves on. Man behind him, tall guy, no mask on, gets close up to my, my nephew and coughs right on his neck. I got issue with that. That's a problem. You know, Going out and being irresponsible when there's diseases. That's not faith. That's not being faithful. That's not saying, oh, God's going to protect me. I'm not going to worry about it. But that's not. That's not. Making choices and care for the other. That's an example of our faith. There is so much hatred in the world, 
and we are called by God through Christ's resurrection power to be examples of Christ's love, light, and peace. Like the Christians Peter wrote to, we too need to show our love for the God we have not seen. And how do we do this? By showing others what God looks like through our reflecting actions of Christ that are revealed in the Word of God. Amen. Now we come to a time Of offering, uh, I do want to express. Um, I mentioned last week that though we are meeting virtually, uh, we still have God's building to keep and and bills to pay. And I want to extend our deep, deep gratitude to the offerings that were sent in this past week for the good uh, for the good of Christ Church to help us uh, make ends meet. If God places on your heart to give to our church and you have your offering ready, um, what I'd like you to do is I ask that you set it before you as we ask for God's blessing upon it. Easter teaches us that generous love is at the heart of God's work. Joyfully, we are able to give knowing that our gifts will help others to see the blessed miracle of God's creative joy. At this time, if you have your offering, I ask that you place your hand upon it and pray with me. Loving God, can a generous prayer be lifted up to you this Easter tide? Can these gifts given with love be further transformed like echoes of grace, delighting all who receive their blessings. Oh God, may it be so, through the surprising power of your Holy Spirit. And may our lives speak of a loving God, full of Easter surprises. Alleluia. Amen. And again, we thank you for your generosity of spirit. We come at this time, if you haven't gotten your elements for communion ready, uh, I ask that you go grab your um, wheat uh, or grain type bread, whatever it is, cracker, it doesn't matter, uh, and whatever you're going to use for drink uh, during this time. For Holy Communion this morning, I invite you to lend Christ your table. For all that we are, all that we have, belongs to the risen Lord. Alleluia! We remember on the night of Jesus' betrayal. He took the bread. He gave thanks to God. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to all those whom he loved and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body broken for you. The same way, after giving thanks, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to those whom he loved and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Drink of it as often as you will, and when you do, remember me. We are one bread, one body, one cup of blessing. Rest your hands lightly upon 
these elements, which we set aside today to be a sacrament, and let us together ask God's blessing upon them. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection and awaiting Christ's return and victory. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and drink, on our gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives that we may know you as the Holy One, who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever and ever. Amen and Alleluia. My beloved family, receive Christ's body broken for you. My beloved family, receive Christ's blood poured out for you. Join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. <clears throat> if you were able to print the music, this next song we're going to sing is called um, Blessed Are They. <clears throat> Again, it's another oldie. Uh, it was written by David Haas. Ooh, 1957. Hey, those were good years, right? <clears throat> of course, it was before I was here, but, you know, it's all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rejoice! 
rejoice and be glad. I ask you now to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Follow God's lead into a new life. Recognize Jesus in unexpected places. Easter, Christ is risen. May you dance an hallelujah dance and sing a resurrection song and laugh with God and let joy Reside in your hearts always. Amen. I pray that all of you will have a blessed uh, rest of your Sunday, uh, and I will see you again on here soon.